And now it's my great pleasure to introduce our next speaker. Her name is Olga Topol, an esteemed SEO specialist at Busta. Olga brings a wealth of experience and expertise to the table with a portfolio that spans over 25 projects in various fields, including e-commerce and marketplaces. With more than 10 years of experience in marketing, Olga has developed a deep understanding of SEO strategies that drive results. What sets Olga apart is her specialization in handling large-scale projects, particularly those with over 10,000 pages, and her expertise in working with the foreign market, primarily the USA. Today, Olga will be uh, shedding light on the eight most common SEO mistakes at the start on a project and how to avoid them. Everybody, welcome, Olga. Olga, I'm so happy to see you here today. How are you feeling? I'm fine, thank you. Hello, Nadia. Hello, everybody. I'm so glad to see you. I see the conference and it's really interesting today. So thank you to all the speakers. It was really nice to hear good Thanks information. A Thanks a so, lot. I want <laughs> yeah, to add I, uh, some my experience today too <laughs> to this conference. Everybody likes to, to hear about mistakes. So I'm sure our participants will be excited. Are you ready to share your presentation? Yes, I'm ready. All right, so. Nice. Let's go. Uh, in a couple of words, I was working in two agencies and I saw many projects who came to us uh, uh, without a proper sale uh, at the beginning and we were fixing it a lot. So I want to share today information. So for that people who are starting new projects, new websites, uh, but you are not sure I want to do sale or you are not want to do sale now, but you will do it later. So better to avoid these mistakes now than in the future for your future sales specialist it will be much easier to work with your website because some really crucial mistakes can break all your future strategy of the promotion in Google. So let's talk about these mistakes. And I want to add, it's from my experience. So of course, there are much more and also technical stuff, but it's like the most crucial that you can avoid without even sales specialist. You can do it like a webmaster. So we will talk about domains, hosting, uh, content, uh, link building, and sell as a marketing channel. First of all, domain selection. Before you choose the domain, uh, it's important to check the history. There are tools like um, uh, Wayback Machine or Web Archive where you can see uh, what was uh, on the same domain uh, relocated, uh, relocated before you uh, want to buy it. Uh, for example, you can see on the screen as there is a website that is now uh, domain is free you can buy it but uh, in the previous years uh, you could see that uh, there was another website and situation is that for google the history of the previous website will fluent your website. If you want to promote it by sale, in the future you could have uh, big problems because of bad backlinks to the old website, or for example, some manual Google actions to the old website. So if you are not SEO expert and you don't know how to check the old website on the same domain, then better to avoid these domains and uh, buy a clean one without history. So it's really risky to buy a domain with history and uh, so so if you really need exactly this domain name, domain, then uh, ask a sale expert and double check the information. So are you allowed to take this uh, domain and uh, are there any risks and problems with it? Also, I want to mention about uh, domain name. So we choose uh, short and uh, easy to remember for your clients and of course with your brand name, but it's also preferably to add some main keywords. Don't make it too long, but uh, some keyword in your domain main it's, it's still working and it will help you at the beginning of the project to reach the results later. And the last moment about the domains is domain zone. Uh, it's really important because uh, if you want to promote, for example, project for all English speaking countries, for example, USA, Canada, Australia and others, then you better use uh, some universal, for example, .com uh, and don't use .uk. But on the other hand, if you know that all your clients will be from the Great Britain and all your business will be located only in Great Britain, it's better to choose dot uk instead of dot com dom dot com it's really important in the beginning and it will be good for yourself in the future next point uh, it will be so i also uh, doubled all information that i was speaking so you will receive this presentation with the same information so competitors and niche uh, it's 
really strange, but not uh, all people make this analysis at the beginning. And I mean, not your competitors in the business uh, point. I mean, the competitors uh, who will be in top 10 Google and the websites with whom you compete if you want to get the positions in the Google and to get organic traffic. So how to do it? Uh, first of all, uh, collect your semantic core and uh, Okay, if you just make young website, it could be some approximately keywords. So you don't need to make whole uh, semantic core at the beginning, but you can check uh, which websites are shown in Google top 10 and they will be your competitors for the Google meaning. So it could be even some such websites like Wikipedia or Amazon. So they are not your business competitors, but you will divide with them positions in Google top 10. That's, what's, that's why it's important to know them and uh, when you will have this information, you can calculate uh, the forecast, how much money and how much time do you need to get in top 10 Google. And it could happen that for some young websites, you need, for example, hundreds of thousands of dollars per year to reach results to be in top five. And it's possible to calculate. It's not easy. You need to hire some SEO experts for this additional research, but you will know what to expect from this channel. Because I know some cases when people are doing website and they just do some SEO, they hire some SEO specialist without this analysis. And one year later, they're just wondering why we are not have positions in top 10. So this analysis in the beginning will help you to understand what to expect from this channel. Uh, for example, as I can show, uh, on this slide, uh, we, ha we have a keyword by laptop. So just if you have uh, the keyword by laptop, uh, you, you have a shop that sell laptops and uh, it's small shop and you want to be in top 10 Google and receive organic traffic. But for keyword by laptop, you see top five positions is Best Buy, Walmart, Amazon. So it's impossible to come higher than then in the nearest half year for sure could be in a year but because of really um, expensive links and quality strategy so um, it's possible to calculate at the beginning which keywords to avoid and not use on your website and which keywords to to use on your website instead of them so it's also important to, to know what to expect for this channel and also like the same so not be wondering years later why it's late, year later why it's not wondering why it's not working. Sorry. So next thing, link building. Very big mistakes it's possible to do at the beginning of the project. It's fast, cheap links. There are some examples from the upwork of the real advertisement, uh, how people sell this uh, five thousand to follow links. Please, if you don't, uh, if you didn't work before with the link building. If you don't know how it's working, avoid it. Don't do it because fix after this takes longer time and more money than buy them. So it's cheap to buy. It will get some fast results for short term, but in long term strategy, it could happen that because of these links, you need to change a domain name. Because I had such cases when uh, the uh, website received penalty from Google, it, it called manual actions from Google uh, because of spam links. And after this, it was impossible to do something with this website uh, and to, to make some visibility and we even changed domain name. So it's really risky and uh, avoid fast cheap links, especially now after December's Google update, links are, need to be more carefully chosen. And uh, also don't make uh, the same commercial on course in the big quantity, like you can see on the picture in the left. So for example, for the young website, uh, you can see text on core and how much domains with this on course uh, give link to this website. For young websites, it's prohibited. Really, don't do it because Google won't uh, give any visibility or positions it obtained for young websites if it's just with such on course. So what is better to do to avoid this, uh, all this stuff? So uh, better less guest posts or articles, but from uh, higher quality uh, websites instead of many cheap. So in this case, especially with links for the young sites, they are needed. So it's impossible to avoid link building. Anyway, you will need it, but it's better to choose domains carefully. It's also really important at the beginning because just one manual action from Google and from the nearest two years, your sales specialist will do a lot of work to fix it. So next point, website security. 
Uh, for me, it's strange that I still need to mention it uh, in 220 sort of year, but even now I can meet some websites on HTTP protocol. Uh, still, there are some programmers do this, and uh, it's crucial, important to have website on HTTPS uh, because Google will show your website is unsafety on HTTP for your clients. So it's really important uh, for ranking in top 10 be on HTTPS protocol, and uh, important to make it at the beginning on the website, not uh, later, because uh, usually later there are a lot of mistakes because of this, it's like redirecting from the HTTP to HTTPS. And in these cases, I saw so many mistakes from programmers, even on WordPress, it, it sounds easy, but uh, they appear. So it's better to do it at the beginning of the website. And the second point is security password. Uh, really sounds like basic, but uh, uh, check your passwords because uh, many uh, tools will try to hack your website and use for their sanguine strategies. So make sure that your website has complex, difficult to hack uh, password and make sure that you have HTTPS in the very beginning of your launching your website. Next is about hosting. Hosting is also important for Google because if your website is not accessible for the clients, uh, Google then will rank it down. So if Google, let's say, doesn't like it when your uh, website are not available, and in these cases, uh, the counting is going for hours. So as long as your website is not available, then worse it will be for your website for Google ranking. So that's why uh, hosting is really important, and there are uh, several points. So first of all, choose the right location of hosting. I mean that if you have, for example, clients for uh, United Kingdom, then better to choose some local hosting instead of, uh, for example, American hosting. So also uh, hosting should be located in the country that uh, is priority for your promotion and for, will be for your clients. A second uh, check that your hosting is secure, for example, from the DOS attacks, uh, and uh, check uh, uh, the schedule of support, because even now some uh, supports have holidays, and it's so crucial when, for example, it's Sunday or some holiday, and you write, okay, guys, anybody can answer, and uh, nobody's answering, so check the support uh, working 24-7. And uh, also my advice, uh, choose high speed brand name servers. It will be kind of guarantee that you will receive all the previous points. And also if you want to make a big website, uh, make sure that uh, hosting has stable work with a heavy load. So you can ask a service more information about this, uh, but for big websites, it's also crucial because it will fluent the loading speed of your website and then or your Google ranking in the future too. So with hostings, Okay, now mobile friendly. It's really um, also 21st century, but we are talking about it. So, you know, I'm sure that you use mobile phones every day and uh, more and more people are visiting websites from the mobile. Uh, and Google a uh, couple of years ago announced the mobile uh, first index algorithm that gives priority to mobile version of the websites instead of desktop version. So that's why mistakes on the mobile version, they are crucial for your ranking in Google top 10. To have the positions in top 10, you need to, uh, to show Google that your website is adaptive. Also, the second point, you need to check your load speed, that it's not loading for 10 seconds, for example. You need to make it as fast as possible with hosting and other stuff. Uh, and also check that all elements are not too small. So for example, here's the example of really existing websites that are not updated now, uh, and uh, they not have, uh, some of them have, uh, top 10 positions, but uh, you see not all elements are accessible for the visitors. For example, hidden text or whole website is too small. So yeah, it's uh, even now it's crucial because of mobile first indexing. And also one more thing I want to add, uh, how to avoid this. When you make a, a layout with your designer for the website, if you do it with designer before uh, programming the website, uh, then uh, First of all, draw mobile version of the website and other this desktop. Because I saw uh, many designers are still working with desktop version only as a main version. But uh, uh, now it's better to start with mobile version and after this 
draw desktop version. And also for before uh, programmers will launch a website, pay attention for them that mobile version is more priority for testing and for visibility of each element of your website. So it also will help you to avoid uh, mistakes and technical errors in the future connected to the cell implementations. So next one, content. There are really a lot of information about content and so many mistakes possible to do, but I uh, mentioned some of the most crucial that really can stop growing the website. So first of all, and it's for young websites, it's not for old and uh, like big one, it's for young. So don't copy content from other websites. I still can meet some websites that are copying a lot of content. Uh, uh, so if you know how to do it, okay, there are some strategies that are exactly the strategy of some websites, then okay. But if you want to make a real business in the like uh, white uh, reputation and uh, you want uh, to make a long-term strategy and you want to receive clients in three years, in five years on the same website, then don't copy the content if you don't know how to do it properly. And also don't fill website with generated text. So it was mentioned before, IE is still not okay with uh, fact checking. And also IE is, uh, could be detected by Google and then it's possible to get, pen get penalty from Google. So it's risky. So yes, yeah, there are some strategies in some gray niches with uh, generated contact and copying uh, text. But if you don't know how to do it properly, don't do it because you heard that it's working for some other websites. So if you want a long-term strategy, don't, genera don't put generated text. You can like take inspiration from the text, but it's better unique uh, human written text. Also, grammatical mistakes is also important to, to avoid them because in Google Assessor Guide is even mentioned that grammatical mistake uh, is a sign that you are not working enough with your website. So it's also uh, fluent your ranking in Google Top 10. And uh, uh, it sounds strange, but it's important to Google to avoid grammatical mistakes in the text. And next point, it's about not using keywords and text and headings. I was surprised, but I saw it even not once when there were, when there was sales specialist on the project. Well, it was even two projects that I met with it, but they avoid using keywords because Google mentioned at some conference that uh, uh, don't over spam your pages and uh, keywords uh, can uh, write content from people don't write for, from sale. And because of this, uh, they didn't have any keyword in the headings or in the text. And uh, uh, just adding keywords in the text a heading helps to receive visibility. So uh, I just want to repeat, even if Google say, don't over spam your text with keywords, it's still working. And don't forget to check that you added it to the headings. Not all of them, so over spam is also not good, but using a couple of keywords for the page, if you're not sales specialist, you're just doing website for your business. So don't forget to add a couple of them. And the next point, uh, publishing large number of pages without text. It's about big websites. So if you know that you are making e-commerce and it will be a big shop in the future, uh, so make sure that your each new published page is with content and it has some value for your visitor. If you publish uh, the same, uh, it's popular for e-commerce when you publish, for example, products without any text or description to it. And it's just product page with images and couple parameters. So for young websites, it will be for Google, um, not a good signal. It will show that you have not valuable content uh, for the visitors. So just image and parameters could be for Google not enough uh, to describe the good uh, fully. So you need some description about it and reviews. So uh, don't. it's better to publish less pages, but with valuable contact description and product review instead of a large number of the page without text. So it's for young websites. And the last one, it also mattered a lot uh, uh, when people have the same block of text, and it could be long text, for example, about why we are the best or why choose our company, and that they put on each product page. For example, they have uh, 100 products, and they uh, put this block why you should buy in our shop. Uh, it's also uh, not good practice, especially from the Yak websites, because uh, it's confusing Google. So uh, Google should see on your page description of this uh, product and uh, the same text block on the each page. It's like uh, for him, let's say, confusing. 
So that's why uh, it's better if you really need this block because your marketers told that it's flowing, for example, why people are buying. In this case, um, you better make unique variants of this text. For example, three points on one page, five points on another page and rewrite them. It will work better than just copy the same block on each page. So with content, uh, it's possible to make a content plan if you have made this uh, search and niche analysis, uh, uh, as I was mentioned before, uh, it's possible to make forecast how many pages with text do you need for your blog or for your uh, category to receive uh, some results in the nearest future. So it's better to come the, in the question of the content, so not like uh, let's do blog and just generate text. It's better to have wise approach and uh, uh, make a strategy strategy which uh, articles to publish and uh, double check that these articles have the value for your clients and they are human written, high quality and they are trusted. It would be better for the young resource than just copying or generating other text. So better less but higher quality. And the last one, it's more connected to the marketing because I was working as marketer too. Uh, so there are two points about uh, like SEO in general. First of all, SEO is, uh, now is really unpredictable. Uh, I think you saw this presentation uh, uh, on the previous week and also Google announced yesterday additional to this presentation. So they want to make the new generated SERP, as you can see on the picture. So if you Google any keyword, they will give you generated information but without uh, uh, organic uh, links. So the typical positions like uh, top three Google, they're hidden down and for mobile uh, version, it could be like third or fourth screen. So we need to scroll a lot to see where are the normal websites. And Google is still working on it. Uh, so they didn't announce uh, the date of implementing it, but it will flow in uh, all cell in general. and. Uh, I, need to, I think they need many time to fix it and to make it properly, but uh, let's say in one or two years they will do it and it will fluent sell in general. So it could happen that people will use uh, organic search like less and they, it will be enough information from this generated parts. Uh, and uh, also Google are doing updates, Google is doing updates uh, a lot. And uh, these updates uh, from time to time, so they're so crucial. For example, a December update uh, that was in 222, it was so crucial for such uh, big businesses. Uh, uh, people one morning lose the half of the clients and traffic. So that's why my uh, advice, don't uh, make uh, like sell your main channel. All time think about plan B. What will you do in the case of uh, Google update or new Google SERP or something else. So don't make on your business only on this channel. So if you want to have a long-term marketing strategy. And well, another important fact about uh, Google that uh, for the young website, to help this young website rank later in top 10, uh, there are uh, important things like behavioral factors. So you need to show Google that this website is interesting for visitors and they visit this website from the other channels. For example, Google Ads, social networks, or maybe referral links from other websites. So when Google will see, so actually Google will see everything that we do in our Chrome browser and other applications. So when Google sees that uh, visitors come to your website uh, from other channels, that it will help your SEO promotion too. So it's also important to make not only SEO, but uh, SEO in complex with something else. Uh, but anyway, don't uh, make uh, like sell the main channel. So it could be like the main now, uh, but calculate the risks because of this new implementation. So, and, and uh, one more thing about sell, uh, like don't uh, wait, uh, like don't expect that, for example, in three months of sale promotion, you will receive the clients from this channel. So really, uh, I was working a lot with sale. And for example, I was making forecasts two years ago and they were more correct than, for example, now in forecasting, I calculating, uh, uh, I try to calculate all risks, but with so many amount of updates. And these updates are so illogical sometimes that uh, it's, more and it's more complicated to forecast uh, traffic and leads from this channel in the future. So yeah, SEO is a 
unpredictable now and this is what we have today with all these Google updates. So, as a conclusion, I want to add like, uh, you know, conclusions, eight steps, uh, what to do to make your website like basically ready for the sale promotion. Okay, we, of course there are more of them, but it's like basic. So it's wise domain selection. Uh, competitors and niche analysis on the sale channel, uh, well sought out quality link building, website security, high quality hosting, mobile friendly, unique quality human written content, and other marketing channels at least start of the project are also included. So this is like the basics that I wanted to say you. So uh, I think uh, it's all. I'm ready for your questions. Olga, your practical insights have been truly invaluable to our audience. I see so many fantastic comments. So Hale writes, this is my favorite session. Uh, so you do write so insightful. I love it. Uh, and I see that our participants left also several questions for you. Uh, can we write an article using AI tools? What do you think? Uh uh, the answer is yes, you can do it. But wow. uh, what will be the con con what will be after this? So um, I think this question is more to the previous speaker actually about the tools, but I can also answer. So for some projects, yes, I use uh, uh, AI tools written articles, but I don't do it uh, like uh, uh, Chat GPT. Please write for me an article. I do it in the another tricky way. I have the uh, prompts I have like even kind of strategies so first of all I give uh, five questions to it and then uh, I give additional information to it and, and even it's good practice to ask uh, for example chat GPT uh, you can ask him what information do you need to write this article and he will answer you and after this the article will be high quality so you can receive higher quality article from the IE tool uh, but uh, you need a lot of practice and you need uh, to know how to do it. So it's not like just write for me. So if you're talking about uh, uh, chat GPT, write for me an article on the topic. No, this is bad practice and it will be easy to detect and uh, uh, Google will detect it. And there are no value of such article if you want to use it for sale. For example, it could work for Facebook because for Facebook, uh, uh, IE written uh, text is possible to, uh, to use, but uh, for organic search in Google, it uh, can fluent bet uh, in the future on the positions. And um, yeah, on the other hand, uh, uh, it's your website. And if you know that you have, uh, for example, already uh, 50 uh, high quality human written articles uh, and your website has trust uh, so you can have make some experiments uh, with it for example you can make some additional author and uh, or new category and prepare te uh, text for this category so it can be experiment just in case you, you will delete it later so but for young website if you are just beginning your own blog uh, i would recommend not to do it Great. Thanks for your tip, because I, I think everybody uh, now use uh, AI, ChatGPT to write content. I don't think about anything more. OK, and I have one more question uh, from Oyuwali. As an SEO analyst, is it a must that you uh, know how to create websites or learn programming languages? Um, there are two questions in one. So about how creating websites, uh, basics for sure. So as a sales specialist, you work with code. You need to see how the micro data is implemented inside. You need to understand how these blocks connected to each other. And even if you give recommendation about speed optimization. So yeah, you must know basics. So as for me, uh, I, for example, can make website on WordPress uh, constructor, and uh, but I understand also how working as a CMS and what could be special about them for example react it's completely different for wordpress and other logic so yeah you need to know this information but uh, uh, you have programmers who will do it but to speak with your programmers on the same uh, language and uh, to make the uh, correct technical tasks for them it's good to know so yeah as for me uh, i read a lot about this and especially if there are some websites on specific cms uh, are coming so um, yes it's it's necessary to know it and can you please repeat the second part uh, of the question yeah yeah okay so um 
uh, is it a must that you know how to create websites or uh, learn programming. programming languages? Yes. Uh, programming languages, uh, 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 if you're talking about big websites, uh, it can help. So it's not like must have, like without it, you cannot become a SEO singer and make uh, organic traffic for big websites. But if you know programming languages, you can optimize your work. So for big websites, if you have a website, for example, more than 50,000 pages, you can write your own scripts that will gather data, make some parsing, and also scripts for Google Sheets. They will help you work faster with uh, big data. And also good to know uh, uh, BigQuery and uh, Python uh, and uh, others. So um, it's good to know it will help you. But if you don't know it, it's still uh, you can make uh, organic traffic. Uh, so great. Thank you so much. We have so many questions for you. Uh, one more nice question from Blessing. How long does it take Google to approve your site? Could you answer like? <laughs> Uh, it depends from niche. Yeah. That's why this uh, niche analysis was mentioned in my presentation. If it's a, a high competitive niche, it will take longer. If it's low competitive niche uh, and uh, uh, when the band is higher than the uh, quantity of the websites that is present, it will be faster. So it's it really depends on niche, even not on, not on the your size uh, size of the website. Uh, and the second point, it will be the si uh, size of the website and uh, uh, how fast you grow. So uh, how fast you put you get new backlinks, uh, how fast you publish new pages. Uh, so this speed also will show uh, like some signals, will give some signals to Google. Uh, but first of all, it's niche. So in some niches, uh, it could take uh, half year. In other niches, it could be one month. Uh, so it depends. Okay, and uh, the last but not the least question, how can SEO professionals effectively communicate the importance of SEO to stakeholders at the beginning of their project? Uh, it's really, it's not easy question. Uh, yeah. So uh, it's uh, good to have this forecast. So for, I had these situations in my life and not once when I came. So we need sell and I receive ones where not it's too expensive and unpredictable. But if you're a good sales specialist, you can calculate the forecast. Okay, for this nearest one year, we need a lot of money. So we need, for example, $20,000 for backlinks. We needed to pay them now but then in two years later later we will receive more clients from SEO than from google ads or facebook ads so it's possible to calculate not easy but possible and with this forecast you need to show to the uh, uh, stakeholder that uh, you see the strategy for three and five years so uh, to explain him why we need sale for the nearest three months it will be almost impossible because you won't get result uh, uh, in one two months and in three it only will begin to to grow but uh, if you explain that in three or five months it will uh, be like main uh, lead generation channel it will be easier to come with this forecast Oh, that's a great piece of advice. Olga, thank you one more time for this insightful presentation, for answering all the questions. I encourage everyone, please connect with Olga. It's a super specialist. We are so glad to see you here today and looking forward to seeing you at our following events. Have a nice day. Thank you so much. Okay. Have a nice day too. Bye-bye.